Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I'm going to build these uh, British Battlefront Flames of War uh, M10 anti-tank tank destroyers. These are for late war. I'm going to be using these in probably in Italy or possibly North West Europe uh, for my growing British forces for those, this little project that I'm kind of putting together. I wanted the M10s because they're just nice tanks really. I've always liked them. Great little things. And uh, this is a pretty cheap box set. I think it was about £20. Got it off eBay or somewhere and it's got four tanks in it which is enough for a platoon in Flames of War but I, like I said I'm going to be using it for uh, for chain of command or for IMB shot mum rather than the intended use of the game. So without further ado let's have a look at the sprue and get on with this build. So the kit includes four tanks, uh, the sprue is pretty full, there's a couple of different versions for the turrets and also for the guns as well, for the 17 pounder and, and I think 3 inch gun as well. You also get the tracks as well on here and all the different mantlets and stuff and uh, a couple of different turrets. Uh, we've also got British tank commanders as well and the crew, so they'll be used in there. And then I've also got these decals and the uh, unit cards that are used in Flames of War. First job is to spray up, prime spray all the parts, and I do this while they're all on the sprue, just because it makes it a lot easier. Lay them all out on a big board like this, this is my table, do it in a well-ventilated room, or wear a mask, and I just use cheap uh, spray primer from uh, Wilkinson's here in the UK, this is probably about £5 a can, and just spray all the fronts and then spray all the backs as well, and then just ensure that every bit of them are covered. You don't really need to do this, but it just gives you a good coverage straight away before you even start building these. You can always go back and spray them later once they're built, but I'd just like to get this priming out of the way because it gets everything covered at this point anyway. And then it's just really a case of cutting them off the sprues once they're all dry. And then just cleaning up any nubs and things that you can see. There's always little lumps of plastic. I usually clip up my tanks off the sprue and then clean up with a sharp knife afterwards and you can either cut away or use it to scrape like I'm doing here just to clean off. Just be careful of not damaging the plastic too much because it is quite soft and you can make quite a mess of it quite easily with a really sharp knife. And then I find dry fitting first is always easiest before I start to cement. I use uh, liquid cement just because again it's a lot easier than using the stuff out of a tube. You can get it exactly where you want and it doesn't melt the plastic as much as the uh, stuff from the tubes seems to do. I'll always go back as well and seal up any of the gaps where the uh, two edges meet. These ones are really nice because they're really sharp edges on these models. And I'll just go through all the little bits and pieces uh, and adding everything you can to the hull all at once. I generally do most uh, four tanks at once. Uh, while I'm doing this just to speed up the process rather than one at a time and it's finally uh, putting the tracks in place as well so as I say seal it in there with the liquid cement and then you're pretty much done really with the hull there's not much else to do on that apart from adding some details later on then we move on to the turret uh, we start with the uh, breech of the gun which sits just on the inside of it first of all this uh, you have to put in first of all I don't know if you've noticed, but you can actually see there's some ammunition as well, just on the inside of the turret. So I'm going to leave the turret top off for now, or at least the back of it off anyway, so I can paint this ammunition later on. Uh, put together the gun and the mantlet as well, decide which weapon you want to use. I did two with 17 pounders and two with the 3 inch gun for my needs. Put those together, then put the top of the turret on. As I say, you can see there I've left the back off, just so I can actually get to that ammunition that's on the back there and then we put the uh, mantlet and the gun in place itself ensuring doing a dry fit first of all and then uh, getting the liquid cement on it just in the right place so we know exactly what we're doing and then that will sit together and dry nicely uh, only takes probably an hour or so actually the liquid cement is quite good stuff so we have it completed I haven't glued the turret in place because I want it to be movable in games. The next thing I do is add some storage, so this is some little details. These, Some of this stuff has actually been uh, added in the kit itself, so I'll just put these in places where I think it should go. You can put it anywhere. They use, they use uh, spare tracks for extra armour and things, so that's usually on the front plate or sometimes on the top of the mantlet as well. 
And then I also have some other extra stowage that I have as well that I bought from various other manufacturers. And I'll just put some of this on. Again, this is really to break up the shape of the tank, especially these allied tanks. They're generally one colour. So it's nice to have some stowage just to break up the colour and the actual shape of the vehicle as well. Uh, stick this on because these are white metal. I'll put these on with super glue. And then we're all pretty much finished. As I say, the back of the turret is just yet to be glued in. But that's it as it stands. I'll probably prime this again with a spray primer just to bring all that stowage to the same colour. And then it's ready for painting. Painting is very simple. I'm using Vallejo's Bronze Green as my base coat. Using a pretty thick big brush, I'm just basically slapping this on as much as possible. If you go over it a couple of times, you'll cover all the details, but you know, ensure you can get as many in as possible on the first go over. It makes it painting a second coat a lot easier. This is nice thick paint anyway, so it goes on quite easily. You can also see there I've painted the turrets. I've painted the interiors of those, but I've also left the top off just for now because I've still got detail inside that I need to paint. And I'll be coming back to that in a bit. And then next up, we start with the Agrax Earthshade. This is our wash. Uh, you can use what you want. I think this is the best stuff on the market. I use a big thick brush, get right into the paint there and get it right into those details. So you're really uh, going to be picking out all the uh, the high level detail that there is on these tanks which there is quite a lot of this because uh, we're going to bright dry brush these later uh, we want some of these big big areas to be nicely shaded just to give it a bit of interest and this just goes on all over the tank as i said nice big thick brush it's got a good flow on it the agrax and it gets into all those nooks and crannies of detail and then i start to dry brush the tanks individually I use Russian uniform sorry Russian green for this literally just getting some of uh, some of the paints onto the brush and get as much off as possible on an old rag or a kitchen towel or something and then just gently uh, brush over the top of the tank with a large flat brush like this and this will pick out all the details uh, that you've already washed with the Agrax and you can see there it's picking them up as I'm going around working my way around these large surface areas. Uh, try to go with the grain of the tank so to speak so you know up and down for the sides and uh, as a few different directions for the top as well. And once that is finished I then work on the stowage so I'll start with the green stuff the uh, camouflage netting and things and just paint this in various shades of green you can use whatever you want for this really I've just used whichever greens were at hand and what this does is then because these are single color tanks it actually breaks up the shape and the color of the vehicle as well just makes them look a little bit more interesting i'll also do details as well like the machine guns and things that are going on the top of the turret as well and then the reason i kept the tops of the turrets off is because i wanted to paint the ammunition on the inside i painted the, this with bronze and with silver I work my way through each of the turrets you can see here the ammunition is quite obvious even when the top is on so I wanted to get this this painted uh, and I did this after the dry brushing and everything I painted the uh, the bronze with bronze color obviously and then also silver for the uh, end of the shell but then I also washed them as well in Agrax Earthshade I didn't bother doing any any hide lights with these because it's quite dark in the turret anyway and I just wanted that nice contrast with the Agrax which worked perfectly well. Also I painted the other bits and pieces of the stowage as well so bags and uh, satchels and things like that that you find and also the tools I painted those with various browns again just to break up the colour of the tank itself so it's not all just one solid green. I painted the tracks next. This was the next thing to do. Just painted these in solid black because I'm going to dry brush these with khaki anyway after I've actually done the, the painting. Sometimes if it's a metal track I will go over with rust and various other things but these are largely rubber tracks as far as I'm aware from what I could see from photographs and they're pretty black so I decided just to do them very simply as black because I was going to weather them anyway. So that's basically why I'm doing this. Just a block black all the way around. You don't have to be too neat because you are going to go back anyway and dry brush uh, khaki over these. Then back with the Agrax, uh, our favourites. I just washed all the stowage. 
again if you want to highlight this stuff afterwards you can I didn't bother the Agrax is good enough and you can see here where I dry brush khaki back over those tracks now that was it they were basically done uh, so I gave them a good spraying of uh, matte artist matte varnish by Newton and Windsor the best stuff on the market and I turned my attention to the bases these were made from plasticard I like to base my tanks a lot of people don't I do you simply draw them up make sure you measure them properly then cut with a nice sharp knife to get these I cut off the edges just to give them a bit of a rounded shape and smooth those down into a nice almost oval shape on those edges so there's not they don't look particularly harsh and then covered this in Vallejo's uh, texture material this is I think it's just um, flat earth color and you just put this on with a brush and it dries nicely in within about an hour or so once that had dried I forgot to film it but I then used uh, static grass on the bases using PVA and then it was time to actually once the tanks themselves were dry it was time to uh, glue these down to the bases as well just using super glue just to hold those in place press on it hard just to get through the grass so you know you've got a good bond and then finally it was a case of just painting the crew you can paint these however you wanted I was paint, painted them with English uniform uh, with black berets various little bits and pieces of detail here and then I just gave these a wash with Agrax Earthshade and glued them into shape and that was the M10s complete nice easy build very nice uh, tanks really good little models is full of detail full of sharp detail as well nice and easy to put together uh, these will make a great display on the battlefield when we get to doing some more stuff in Italy if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe if you haven't already uh, if you if you really want to help me out uh, have a look at my patreon page it's uh, linked in the description below uh, any money that I make through Patreon goes straight back into making these videos and it all does help and it's uh, very much appreciated as is you watching this video. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.